Well, Mrs. Lewis, perhaps you will tell us uh, what happened when Flora came. I see that your roof is down. Is this your roof here? Yes, that's my roof, dear. And the house is only completely, approximately, let us say, one month, three weeks bef before Flora struck. And I can indeed tell you, I was terribly scared because I happened to be in the house at the same time. I was just in time to see the back of the roof going over. All the children were with me when it started, but one got out <laughs> and happened so I don't know how she's still alive because a galvanized sheeting from the neighbor's house caught her on the way. She fell and she scrambled and crawled until she got to safety, leaving myself and the others inside. How many and, uh, children were there? Well, it was four of my children and a friend of hers. Well, everybody started bawling and praying, hoping that it would stop. Then one of the children went to open the door first to go outside and the wind threw me down. And I got cut and I started to bleed and I bled there from 3 o'clock until 5.30 to 20 to 6. And eventually the PS, who is Mr. Carlos Kendall, came up to my rescue. He took the baby from me, and then we all went into safety in the government senior's rest house. What time did the hurricane really come down? Well, it started approximately 10 minutes to 3 to my time. And at 3 o'clock, the roof was completely off, and I was there with my cut and the children, everybody bawling and praying, hoping that it would cease. Where was your husband all this time? Well, he was not there. He was not there, so yes. you had to endure this by yes, yourself? Yes, all by myself. Tobago, Crusoe's Island, 12 days after Hurricane Flora. A picture of utter devastation in some areas. The killer hurricane striking with deadly force on two occasions, weaving an erratic path through the island as it carried roofs and walls and tossed houses like matchboxes before it. It was hard to believe that this was the Tobago that one knew. But you were brought back to reality by the calm endurance of the people as they went about the business of clearing up Flora's damage. When the hurricane came, I was in school. And when it ceased, I ran home. I did not get to eat any lunch. How many of you were in the house at the time? Six of us. One Mr. John, I, my two brothers, and my mother and father. The wind came very heavy, and it, be, it pushed, and it broke the back door, and they started to lift it up of the house, and it began to move the house. And after I told my father, I want to come outside because the house moved, and I'm going to jump on the rail. And after he told me, I keep myself quiet. And after, I felt the house move again, and I jump, and I peep, and I see the house move. And after, we jumped on the rail and hold there. And after we went below the house, and then we were below the house around two minutes, the house went away. And you were holding on to the rail? After we hold on to the rail, we went below, let go the rail and went below the steps. I see, because it was a high house, huh? Yes. And the whole house went over the hill? Yes. And what did you have left of, the, of your house? Didn't leave anything. Just those steps that we saw? Yes. Hurricane Flora's indiscriminate destruction, old and new alike. Many schools were hit, disrupting normal school attendance for weeks after the storm. Yes, it was harder to believe. The people of Trinidad and Tobago had always thought themselves out of the hurricane belt. But the mighty force of Hurricane Flora has shown that we must be better equipped to meet the threat of each hurricane season. Well, when the hurricane first struck at about 12.30, I was snug and happy at home. But when news came over the radio that uh, a second uh, 
hurricane was due at five o'clock and advising uh, all householders to secure handles and uh, things of this sort and catch water and so because the water would have been locked off. I thought I would take the opportunity. I had sufficient time. This is about half past two. I consider we had sufficient time to get down to the grocery nearby to secure the necessary candles and things. Uh, but unfortunately, the hurricane struck much sooner. It struck at about quarter to three. While I was still at the grocery, the hurricane struck. I jumped in my car, which unfortunately stalled, and uh, despite all efforts, it refused to, to start again. I had to abandon it there and hurry home on foot. In the meantime, the velocity of the wind increased, and uh, I was actually being pushed by the force of the wind. All this time, governors from the adjoining flats, government flats along the rope, this is the uh, Orange Hill Road, started flying all over the street. For safety, I threw myself flat on the grass verge. There, I was witness to the roof of my quarter, this is, these are government quarters, being blown off. My wife and four children were at home with the roof blown off. You could understand my, my worry, not knowing whether anyone was trapped upstairs, not knowing, wondering whether the house would fall down. I was in a state of extreme anxiety for the safety of my family. I must have remained in those quarters for about three quarters of an hour. After the wind abated a bit, I made a dash of about, must have been about 50 yards to my home, only happy to learn that my family was safe and sound. Trinidad, but for minor damage, escaped the full fury of flora, and its forests were hardly touched. But the land of Tobago was dry and parched and brown. It was as if a fire had ripped through the island. Tobago's forests, so important for soil conservation, for water, were no more. Trees, denuded, stark, jagged, ripped asunder. Coconut plantations, the very lifeblood of Tobago, laid low. It was estimated that hurricane flora damaged 60 to 65 percent of the island's agriculture. But already gentler breezes are blowing over the island, and Tobago records its thanks for help received. We are extremely grateful, and ever will be, for all the help we have got and are still getting from everybody.